All right, welcome back, guys. Um, today we're gonna be cutting hay. I've got the uh, John Deere 7710 hooked up to our Moco hay mower. I'm not really sure what model it is. It's probably about 10 feet, and uh, it's the one-way swing. She doesn't do the center pivot, so it doesn't go to the left or the right, just right to the right, and. Uh, we're going to be cutting probably about 11 to 12 acres of, uh, it's a mix between Timothy and alfalfa. And uh, it's been a little late in the season to be doing first cut, so it's like a taller stand. And we should have cut it off earlier, but we never got around to it, so it's, uh, it's a little overgrown, but uh, we'll do the best with it. So uh, I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch me drive down the road here. Alright, so I've made her down to the field here, and there's pulling in, and uh, right here, here you will see how it swings out, it only does the one way. And uh, so a little explanation about how we're going to cut hay here. So uh, normal hay mowers, they would follow directly behind, well this is a normal one, but the center pivot I mean. And uh, they would fall straight behind the tractor when you're doing this outside row. So um, when you're up against a cornfield per se or a wheat field, see I have a laneway beside this hay field so I can swing it out and I can just drive on the laneway. But then when I get to the to the headland here uh, in a few minutes, you're gonna see how. Um, I'm gonna have to drive over the hay because I can't drive in the wheat. And that's okay, like you're gonna have to do it anyways, but with the center pivot, you're just gonna drive over it first and then the, you're gonna cut it straight behind. But uh, with this one, you're gonna have to uh, cut it and then you're gonna swing around and you're gonna drive and this is where you just cut and then uh, the mower's gonna be swung over so it'll be cutting where you just drove with the tractor and uh, that's how you do your outside rounds we usually do uh, five cuts so five swaths with this mower on the headland so that's five trips around just to get enough room to uh, swing around and you don't want to cut the PTO too short you don't want to turn too short or it'll, uh, it'll start to rub and you don't want to put too much tension on that so um, so we, we do five, so we have lots of room to turn. Uh, some guys may do three or two or whatever the, whatever they please. It's just personal preference. And uh, so you're gonna see where I do a little turn here. And uh, then soon you'll be approaching the, the wheat field. And you'll see how I gotta do that. It just rained that lot, night before, I think, so it was still a bit wet, but it dried down. Okay. Um, we had uh, a couple uh, 
people were servicing the power lines in the back you can see there and the, their big uh, crane tower you can see at that corner there how it made those big grots and that's what those are from they uh, had added an extra line or so so I had to go back our property and a couple other properties to get back to the power lines and that's what that's from we uh, usually cut hay in gear C2 which comes out to be about uh, I'd say about six mile an hour don't quote me on that but I think it's about six mile an hour uh, it doesn't really matter how fast you go with these hay binds they're designed to cut out a faster speed um, you don't want to go too fast because you're going to be bouncing around and putting a lot of wear on your equipment you don't want to do that so uh, you can see how we've got to the wheat field here and uh, I'm just going to back up and go alongside of it and uh, it measure, measures out so you drive along with your left tire just beside the wheat field and then it'll, when you spin around it'll be perfectly just right along that edge Alright, so here you can see that I've got a couple passes done. You can see those guys just going back to the right hand of the, right hand of the camera there. They're going back to the, the power lines there now. And uh, the wind's picked up quite a bit, so it'll be drying out this land. Make a nice hay. And uh, I'll just keep doing this round and round until all the all the hay is cut and, and rows and then uh, later on you'll see the raking process and I'll take you through that as well
see our raking process. It's nothing special. We just got an old roll bar rake. Actually, we got three of them. Um, gets the job done. No, you don't need nothing too fancy. This keeps the leaves in, intact as much as possible. Or as much as possible for like other ones because other ones just whip and throw all the hay around and you lose all your leaves but this one you just simply drive down and just kind of roll some hay over you uh, don't lose as much leaves uh, so I'm gonna be just driving around here and uh, you can see how I rake I'm gonna do a two into one so I'll rake one and then turn around and flip the other one over onto that same row and put two into one for quicker bailing. This is a totally different field than I was cutting before. This is another hay field that we got. Breaking it. I never got any video of bailing or big bailing so I'm have to I'll have to get some of that for second cut or third cut or whatever I can squeeze myself into the baler and get a couple shots of it. It's hard to get shots sometimes. You just get busy and it's, they say, hey, he's ready, you gotta go. Don't got time to grab the camera, so you just run out the door, hop in the baler, and away you go.